Welcome to LNN, your library news network. I'm Robin Linton, and this is my co-anchor. I'm Natalie Gregory. Welcome back. You know, Robbie, even though it's been snowing in Logan today, March Madness has definitely been heating up this week. So true. This portion of the tournament, this round, everything has just been so exciting, and we've had some nail biters, we've had some finishes that will just put you on the edge of your seat. It's true. But what, what less could you expect from a Sweet 16? So true. So, let's jump right in because I know you're excited to hear these scores. First, we have the Hiding Place versus the Emerald Mile. So this is one that's got a pretty strong historical backing versus one that was a community read, actually, just a couple of years ago, sponsored at Utah State University. This was a very strong community read, and I don't know if it worked for or against the Emerald Mile, but so many people recognize it. But with a final score of 45 to 16, the Hiding Place really ran away with this match. The Hiding Place definitely had the backing it needed, and it just it showed that, that people really love this particular title. It's true. Or it may have shown specifically how many freshmen hated having to read the Emerald Mile. That could also be true. <laughs> <laughs> the next title we have, or the next matchup we have, is the life-changing magic of tidying up versus the screw tape letters. Now this one pits two very interesting non-fiction books against each other. First you have The Newcomer. Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up is a very new book and it's all about Eastern um, philosophy. Philosophy, thank yeah. you. Um, versus The Screw Tape Letters, which is a very classic book. I mean, written several decades ago and very much a Christian Western way of thinking. And to pit these two together, I was really excited to see how this match would go. That's, that's very true. And, you know, the life-changing magic, I think it will have its time to shine in the future. But for now, it's going to have to take this experience and just try and, and learn from it. Learn from it so. yeah. With a final score of 52 to 15, the screw tape letters is one of our Elite Eight. Now, the next one, the next two rounds that we're going to talk about were absolute nail biters. The first one was a heart revealed versus Sarah. I have to tell you, I don't know if it was a split demographic or if so many people just love both books, but it was back and forth for a really long time on this one. It wasn't until the fourth period that one really pulled ahead from the other. Very true. These matchups, um, you know, the entire game, as as you mentioned, you know, just it was it was hard to know who was going to pull it off in the end, with so many votes starting to lean each way. No so, way we could have predicted. Yeah, so, so you know, this one being 36 to 23, you know, the Sarah was just uh, really the stronger one in the end. It's true. Now, the last one we're going to talk about is one that I know a lot of people have been invested in. This was the hardest game to watch, I think, of the whole round, really. We have The Murder of the, on the Orient Express versus Elantris. Both of them are classics in their genre. Murder on the Orient Express, Agatha Christie, you can't ask for a better mystery. Elantris, such a strong fantasy world, magic world, strong, strong debut novel for Brandon Sanderson, who has gone on to make a very strong name for himself in fantasy writing. I mean, this one was back and forth. Every vote we counted, one point for one, one point for the other, until the very, very end. And you know, Natalie, I could have sworn that you know maybe you know there would have there would have been a change you know murder on the orient express moving ahead you know in the last moments but it just didn't happen elantris pulled it off mm -hmm. and in future games it could be the complete opposite as you were saying with so many people being in favor of both titles well and i mean next round that elite eight is the first time that we are pitting books from different divisions against separate divisions, so who knows how Elantris is going to stack up against a nonfiction book, really. That's true. So, if you happen to be somebody who voted for murder on the Orient Express, don't fret, because there will be another opportunity in the future. I'm sure that that one will come back again. It has such a strong backing. I'm sure we'll see it again in a March Madness. Absolutely. So, as we move along, we see The Lion, The Witch, and The Wardrobe up against Treasure Island. Ooh. Now this matchup, 
You know, I would say that uh, many of the people who were voting had a prediction that the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe was going was gonna to make it in the end. And they did, 57 to 13. Mm -hmm. Both of these titles are well-loved, but the powerhouse of the matchup was definitely the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Well, and once again, this is one of the highest scoring games of the entire round. So I really think that Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe will be one to watch as we move forward. Oh, that's, that's very true. So as we move ahead to our next matchup, we have The Air versus Michael Bay, Storm of Lightning. Mm -hmm. Now I know many of you are probably very familiar with Michael Bay, Storm of Lightning, which is why we have a score of 38 to 23. Mm -hmm. So all of you that backed, backed that particular title, it did pull it off. And so the air, you know, it's, it's going to have another time as well, as long as, you know, it, it puts in another good effort in the future. You know, I definitely think that The Crown might show up next year, which is the sequel to The Air coming out in just a couple of months. Very true. So we have The Bravest Princess versus A World Without Heroes. Mm -hmm. This was a, another one of those lopsided matchups where, in the end, the hero turned out to be A World Without Heroes. It's true. Edie Baker just didn't stand a chance in this round. Unfortunately, you know, the bravest princess, they're going to have, you know, some work to do if they're going to try and beat another uh, team such as A World Without Heroes. Well, and remember, too, Brandon Mull is one of our returning authors. So I think we can start to expect a really strong showing any time that he ends up in one of our matchups. Correct, yeah. So as we move along to our last matchup, we have the Sword of Summer versus... Allegiant. I have to tell you, I had no idea what to expect going into this one. Yeah, this, this one was just another back and forth, back and forth. Mm -hmm. And with the reveal, in the end, of the total of 37 votes, we have the Sword of Summer. Yes. Allegiant, 27. So, you know, it's, it's just one of those games where it could have been anybody's in the end, but... You know, the Sword of Summer was, was just the one to, to really work it through. Yeah, I don't think this is the last time that we'll see Allegiant. I mean, we saw them last year, strong standing, but they fumbled in Sweet 16 last year as well. But where the Allegiant movies are going to split the final book into two movies, I think we have a chance to see Allegiant try for one more title before the series goes the way of all popular series. Absolutely. So... Hang in there. If you were the one to really want Allegiant to, to move on through to the next round, so it will have another opportunity. Yes. If you are vindictive, or if your favorite team's moved on, we still have voting this week. Remember, we are moving from our Elite Eight, the eight that won from this round, to move on to figure out who the final four are. So, we have another exciting round coming up, and we already have the votes that are being tallied, and, and they're coming in, and we appreciate you all coming in to submit these votes and to help us to determine which teams are going to move on in round three. Absolutely. So just keep your favorites in mind as we read off which titles are moving on to the Elite Eight, and remember, you can be vindictive. If any of your favorites got cut out this round, feel free to come in and vote against the one that beat out your favorite title. Do it. If you really want to see your title move through onto the next round, just really show your support. Mm -hmm. So let's read off the eight titles that we have competing this week, Robbie. So we have the Screw Tape Letters versus Sarah. We have the Hiding Place versus Elantris. Mm -hmm. We have the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe versus Michael Bay, Storm of Lightning. Ooh, that's going to be it's going to be a heavy, heavy matchup. Yeah, that one's going to be a heavy hitter on both sides, I think. Absolutely. Beyonders, World Without Heroes, versus Magnus Chase, Sword of Summer. So, make sure, as Natalie has said, your vote means so much. It's true. Make sure that you come in and that you submit your votes soon so that we can reveal who's moving on to the next round. It's true. Every week we've been surprised by the ones that you love most. 
And let me tell you, working in a library, that is a great thing to see. Absolutely. So thank you for joining us. This is LNN, your Library News Network. I'm Robbie Linton. And I'm Natalie Gregory. And we will see you next time.